there's a lot more to you, even online. For those of you who are content creators, you can't really say you have a niche. You may have the main topic that you are known for. And I feel for me, it's wellness, but you are many things. You are maybe the sporty type. Maybe you have a love for gadgets. Maybe you have a love for animals. And can you carve out a space to talk about all those things? Yeah. I think you can, and I'm doing that today. I'm going to answer that question um, about how to reinvent yourself um, and how I went back to 8 to 5. I've received so, so many questions on my platform about that as well and career. Like I said, when do you know it is time to reinvent yourself? I think you know it is time to reinvent yourself when you have gone through a major life transition. Like I mentioned, I went through like a major life transition and I felt like that was a really good time to do that. Um, also, when you want to grow in your career or to grow in your craft or in your art, that's the time to reinvent yourself. How? It can go very many ways. But I think one of the best ways is just grow your knowledge. Just invest in yourself. I really did. Let me tell you how I invested in myself. One, I really took therapy seriously. I know. All of you guys are like, what? Why? Yeah, I needed to understand me. I needed to understand why I make the choices that I make or why the things that trigger me trigger me or why do I run away from, from certain things. Like I really did have a fear of failure. I, I just have a fear of looking you know, foolish in front of people, which let me tell you guys, you can't grow. You can't grow if you don't look foolish once in a while in front of people. Like there's no way. You learn nothing from success. You learn everything from failure, right? And I wasn't getting it right sometimes with content. I felt like I was failing a lot with the podcasting. I had a lot of back and forth with the people that were helping me create my content because I was overthinking it and I was, you know, I wanted the perfect guest, the perfect episode. But guys, it's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to look foolish. It's okay to forget what you're going to say in the middle of a podcast and ask your editor to really do a good job, you know, getting those bloopers out. But yeah, um, invested. another thing that I did, I went, I learned a lot of courses. I took a lot of courses on personal branding online. I went to YouTube Academy. I went to Google Academy and I learned how to reinvent myself. Um, I learned about public speaking and I learned how to communicate better in front of the camera, in front of people. I think that's a beautiful skill everybody should. If you want like a physical space to learn that, you can try Toastmasters. I think Toastmasters is a really good space to do that. And then networking. Get around people. And I'll tell you why networking was really important for me. I don't think I would have gone back into my career if I wasn't hanging around certain people. Guys, you are the sum total of the five people you hang around with. Do an audit of the people around you. How are you gaining from them? Like, how are you guys sharpening each other? You know, and I think I had to take an audit. It's a... Okay, it's not a very pleasurable experience cutting off certain people. You know, you enjoy hanging out with them. You probably have a good time when you go out for a drink and whatever, but you're not necessarily growing. And some relationships, some friendships you might have to actually lessen and cut off. I'll tell you what, one of them was also family. I genuinely had to do an audit of the people I was listening to in terms of my family and deciding that, you know what? I love them. I want them in my life, but I don't think they can be able to handle the version of me that is coming. I don't think they'll be able to handle who I am becoming. And you know what they say? There are people who love you when you are down. Not down. They love, ah, this is a good one. They love the unhealed version of you. So long as you're unhealed, so long as you're not growing, they love that version of you. Because I don't know whether it's like you're not intimidating, you're not going to make them feel inadequate, you know, you're not going to make them feel like they're not doing their best. So they love that version of you and they want that version of you, but you're growing. 
right? And you're leaving behind certain habits that are not helpful, like just you know, going to sit and drink an entire Saturday, you may decide, you know what, that's not me anymore. I'm actually going to go and go back to class and learn skills. And they're going to be like, what? You're so boring. You know, like they, they're they not going to understand that version of you, but just do it and be comfortable losing some of these connections, even if they're family. I know you're still going to love them, but you're going to actually put up boundaries. So a big thing about reinventing yourself is boundaries. Be very clear about what you can and cannot take. And I think part of that is the foundation of therapy. When you're clear on who you are, you're clear on where you're going, then now you start setting up boundaries, then you begin to invest in yourself, which is such a beautiful thing. There's there's no more loving yourself than investing in yourself, you know? And then um, the other thing, and sorry, I'm going to look at my phone here because I wrote down my notes, is um, now envision, envision who you are and who you're going to become. You know what I do when I'm doing a, a, a photo shoot? I always envision like how I want to look and I always envision where that's going to be placed and if I'm going to be proud of what I see in that platform. So envision yourself, envision a photo shoot of you and, you know, in a certain look with certain hair and, you know, envision you becoming that person and let that vision guide you. And I tell you, every time I have envisioned something about a photo shoot, it has come true because I control the narrative. I control the direction that everyone who's helping me around is going to take, right? And then once you do the audit of the people in your life, I think it's important now to start identifying the kind of people you want to associate yourself with. And you could join um, different platforms where you're going to meet those people. You could identify maybe a mentor or a coach and find them and, you know, start to really um, uh, spend sessions with. You might have to pay for some sessions with coaches, which is not a bad thing, but start to identify, start to identify a person and where they are going is where you want to go and start aligning yourself with them. For me, it's been people in Korea. Um, I had really like an amazing coach who... Um, taught me a lot about leadership and I feel like I need more sessions with her. I identified with somebody in business who's doing big and I, you know, I'm, they're very busy, but I don't give up. And by the way, when you're approaching these people and they tell you, no, please do not be offended. Do not. They don't owe you anything, but you tried and you don't stop. You keep going. Because I know sometimes when you want to approach people, the fear of rejection can come in the way, but don't stop. Uh, find them. You're going to learn so much from them. And I think that's the best way to grow. You may not have like a whole you know, big, huge uh, uh, platform, but you're going to find one or two or three people that I think are going to be important. Um, the other thing is, please, how are you spending your time? How are you spending your time? Do you, have you scheduled out every like hour or two hours of your day to grow yourself? And I'm going back to even career because some people are saying, oh, you know, I want to go back to career. Guys, I was out of uh, an eight to five for five years, right? And that would have costed me big time if I wasn't doing anything meaningful with my time. Because, you know, when you go back uh, and they do those interviews, they're going to ask you, okay, this gap in your career, what were you doing with it? Uh, and then you're going to be blank because probably you didn't do much, but maybe, and I know some of you are moms and you said, you know, I'm going to take a break to raise my children. Fair enough. Fair enough. But that can't be the only thing you're doing. That can't be the only thing. You may take a break for five years, six years, but even as you're raising children, unless you got queen templates, so what do you call them? The ones who have five at a go, six at a go. <laughs> Unless you have that, I don't see how you cannot spend time 
out of work to really like do a master's, even if you started a small business, you can actually package that as experience because you are doing everything. You are the admin, you are the HR, you are the everything. Like find somebody really, really good. Going back to investing in yourself, find somebody really, really good to do your CV and to do your LinkedIn because what they helped me with was to package all of that. And with us women, we don't often realize like, it's experience. It is experience. Even if you didn't earn any money, but you are involved in, say, a project, even a family project, you can package that as experience and put it in your CV and make sure there are no gaps. For me, it's the gaps. Make sure there are no gaps. When I was out, I, gosh, I did, <laughs> I did a lot. I really invested in growing on social media and digital marketing. A lot of it were free courses. I went to HubSpot. I went to Google Scholars, I think is what you call it. Um, and you, a lot of YouTube. I learned all these platforms. I learned design platforms like Canva. I taught myself. I learned how to edit videos real quick on CapCut and all these things. Like I learned all that. So by the time I was connected to the right person, and they were looking for somebody to help with communications and social media. I had the knowledge and I had the experience. Why? Because I wasn't, even if you're doing digital marketing, make sure you're really becoming professional in that area and you're learning and you can certify like here, I actually did a certificate and I learned how to do this. And let me tell you guys, God does not waste any experience. Be diligent and be faithful with what you have in your hands. If what you have in your hands is design, and you know you're really a really good designer, whether it's graphic, whether it's fashion, whether it's interior, you know you're really, really good in that. Be faithful in that. You do not know where it's going to take you. Guys, I kid you not, the job I have right now, it has combined the two things I had been working on for five years and I didn't even like specifically go looking for it. It somehow found me. And it's so weird, <laughs> you know, because I, I was doing culinary nutrition. I went back to school. I learned all about culinary nutrition and I learned all about sports and exercise nutrition. So I really like understood food and how food is good for us and um, all about nutrition. Then I learned all about social media. The job I'm doing right now is comms and advocacy for food security in Africa. Like it combined beautifully what I had been working on, but I had to be diligent for five years um, growing that. Now, when, when, I was, when you're going back to work, you have to think through what areas have you grown yourself and try and pro position yourself that way. And then you will almost certainly attract the right thing for you because you became almost like an authority. You became almost like an expert in that area, right? And um, another tip um, that I think is really important is embrace setbacks as you learn. Embrace those setbacks. Embrace the failures. Like I said, a lot of us fear failure. We fear looking foolish in front of people. We have a fear of audience. Okay, fear, 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 fear is a terrible thing. Like we need to eliminate fear as much as possible. Go in there, fail as much as, you know, when I was learning photography, one of the professors said something really, really interesting. Now I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. I, I, <laughs> I can't call myself a professional photographer, but I can take a decent photo when I go to the field. And one professor said, for you to become an expert in photography, you need to make 10,000 mistakes. And he said, hurry up and go make them. Hurry up right now. Go, go make those 10,000 mistakes so we can get over it. And it's so true. And I've made so many mistakes. So many mistakes when I'm taking content online. I have recorded and the microphone was not on. I have gone to the field, like even in my job, and I had forgotten an extra battery. I've gone without, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the micro SD card to record. Like I've made so many mistakes. Even online with the choice of content, I've made mistakes. 
My changing my name from My Planted Kitchen to Anna Dives, a lot of people criticized that and judged it as a mistake. And there was a period I actually thought maybe that wasn't a good idea because I had already built a brand, uh, My Planted Kitchen, for five years. And then I suddenly changed because I was going through something, you know, and I learned from that. Every mistake, every failure is your learning opportunity. Learn from that. And when you're reinventing yourself, you're such a better version of you. You're such a better version of you because you have this wealth of experience and you have this knowledge from mistakes that you're probably not going to do again. So for the person that's asked me this question, I hope this episode is useful, you know, that you can go out there and be bold, eliminate fear as much as you can, invest in yourself as much as you can, surround yourself with the right network, you know, and be willing to just be uncomfortable. Reinventing yourself is so uncomfortable, guys. Like even when I show up to do this podcast, I'm uncomfortable. I am. Like half of me is cringing. (laughs) But I show up and I do it anyway because that's part of growth. You're never going to be comfortable. You're never going to be at a place of comfort. In fact, if you're in a place of comfort, get out. Get out. You're not growing. You are not growing. Any company will tell you if you're continually having uh, good ratings uh, online, you guys are not running, learning anything. You need to fail, fail once in a while, you know, to start learning new things. Um, and so that said, I want to talk about a really amazing product that we have been using as a family. And I'll start with a story. My eight-year-old has had eczema for most of her life right? And it's been a challenging experience. We have tried everything under the sun. And I know some of you are going to come on the comments and be like, try this, try that for eczema. Aki, we have, we have guys, we have tried it all. And one of the things um, that some doctors advise, because we've seen a couple was obviously work on this Uh, condition internally, work on what she's eating, work on what she's ingesting, and slowly from the outside, she's going to feel better. Now, this is going to be another episode. Trust me, because I have a lot that I have learned along the way on this. But one of the things the doctor said was eliminate gluten. So here we are eliminating, eliminating, can I even say the word, gluten, and realizing that She's not going to be eating all her favorite stuff. She's not going to be having mandazi, chapati, cakes, cupcakes, pancakes. I mean, she's eight. Come on. Like, how is life going to be without all these, you know, amazing um, foods? So I discovered Home Chef. Home Chef, gluten-free. And this flour is so incredible because it's able to do exactly what wheat, other wheat flour can do without adding any extra binders. And we have been able to make chapati, we've been able to make mandazi, we've been able to make all that easily using this flour. So I highly recommend it, guys. I'm going to put their contacts below, like their page, so you can go follow them and uh, buy this flour. For all of you guys who have gluten sensitivity or gluten intolerance or a child who cannot take gluten, highly, highly recommend it, okay? So you go ahead and get it and thank me later. So that is it, guys. Share on the comments below your experience reinventing yourself. How was that, right? And any tips you'd want to share because I know there are people who are going to learn from your experience. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Remember to subscribe and share and like and tell somebody Anadive Show is back. Okay. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.